Thank you, Mr. Lee. Next, let's welcome Ms. Lee, head of International Business Department of Nanhua Futures, to give us a speech. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Li Lin Fang from Nanhua Futures. Thank you very much, Jinju Commodity Exchange, for providing us a chance to communicate together through this webinar. Today, I'd like to give a speech about the trading strategies of polyester derivatives. My speech today will be divided into four parts. The first is the current status of polyester market. The second part is about the outlook for PDA futures market. The third part is PDA contracts and PX contracts. And the fourth part will be overseas clients' participation in PDA futures. Talking about the current status of polyester markets, actually, this Speakers before me have already gave a detailed introduction. So, actually, current market situation is closely related to the COVID-19 pandemic because the impact is very clear. Because there is no clear end of this COVID-19, but we can also see the development of vaccine is very quickly. So. The economic recovery will be eventually lead to a recovery on the demand side. So we can see that demand recovery is very strong. Due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 in China after the Spring Festival last year, And in this year, we can see the new vaccine is expected to be launched on a larger scale. So the export of textile and clothing will also pick up at the same time. Considering the appreciation of the RMB exchange rate, the export competitiveness of China's textile industry and clothing will decline. So China's export industry will still face a difficult future. From this chart, we can see the accelerated speed uh, in the polyester industry. In 2020, the newly added capacity of polyester was 4.94 million tons with a growth rate of 8.52%. Based on the estimated current production in 2021 plus the increment from the release of new capacity, the combination of the two is expected to produce 55.9 million tons of polyester in 2021, with a production growth rate of around 6.5%. Second, let's talk about outlook for the PDA futures market. Though the demand in the downstream will keep recovering, the expansion of new PDA capacity brings a large supply increment. So the area supply pressure is still difficult to resolve in the future under the situation of high inventory. From this chart, we can see even during the COVID-19 pandemic period, The consumption side is impacted a lot, but still our GDP growth is about 7.62% in the past 7, 10 years, and the nominal GDP average growth is about 11.08%, and the combination And 
from this page we can see some suppliers like Hengyi and Weiling in the next year its capacity is expected to increase by more than 20.16% so the expansion of the capacity is not seeing an end so the expansion cycle is not end and the overall supply pressure is still increasing next let's say the contract differences between the CE's PTA futures and SGX PX futures. I believe we can all find that there is close correlation between these two products. We can see they can check the terms from this page. Actually, SGX PX and uh, this is PTA. Has some similarities in contract design. This is the volatility of PTA and PX in the past 10 years. We can say for the active contracts in the past 5 years, this correlation is 0 0.92. So for the two products, there is an obvious price difference can be used for cross-variety arbitrage. In addition, clients can also use the domestic crude oil features launched by SHFE and COMEX features to do arbitrage. We can also do the arbitrage with crude oil features. So building on anticipation of PDA disk processing high and low from 1 to PDA, we can see the trends shows great convergence. The fourth part is about RSC client's participation in PDA futures trading. We know that PDA Futures is a special product open to overseas clients. So both individual and institution clients are allowed to participate in the internationalized futures varieties. The flowchart next below this page is the process of participation. The clients must have the basic knowledge of futures and approved trading experience. And the margin is have to be more than 100,000 RMB for the five days before the trading. And there are some other requirements of require prescribed by this CE. The first mode is to directly open an account through a futures company by an university clients. In this process, you have to open an ONRA account. And the second is to open an account through the RSC brokers. They have to be the clients of the RSC brokers. Then the RSC brokers can open an account through the domestic futures companies. Nanhua Futures We have three branches as overseas brokers located overseas so clients can have more convenience if they choose to trade through our company
My department, the International Department of Nanhua Futures, aims to provide more convenience and services for our overseas clients. So, the first we provide the direct account opening service, and the second, you can open accounts through Hong Kong, Singapore, and British. Now have branches to open an account, and the third one is with the appliance of the QV and RQV and other policies. The the overseas clients may have more channels to participate in China's futures market. The third mode we can provide is to through the queue fee for overseas clients to participate in China's futures market. So as I have mentioned, we have branches in Chicago, United Kingdom, Singapore, and some other branches in other places. So, you can see the global layout from this page. We hope through our global arrangements, we can provide better service after we have more acknowledgement of the futures rules and the laws and the legislations of different parts around the world. We also provide many 